Hi guys, welcome back to the Jira Tutorial Basics. In the last video, we talked about various fields in Jira. In today's video, let us dive deeper into workflows. By the end of this video, we'll understand workflows and its importance in the execution of sprints and software development as a whole. So without further ado, let's get started. In our first video, we showed you how to create a sprint backlog from the product backlog and then we started our first sprint which was for 2 weeks or 10 working days. Now let's get to know more about this active sprint and some key things we need to know here. For that, let's start the second sprint as we have completed the first one. We already have a backlog ready, so once we start this sprint, all these tickets will be ready in our active sprint view. The active sprint of a scrum board displays the issues that your team is currently working on. This is where you transition a task from to do to done, which can be referred to as a Jira workflow. A workflow can be customized based on your project needs by adding different statuses and columns rather than just the to do in progress and done. Let's see how a customized workflow is used in projects at LeafFrog starting with columns. Column helps to visualize where the tasks are at in different stages in the workflow. The customized workflow at LeafFrog includes to do, in progress, in code review, in dev QA, in QA, in UAT and done. All tickets first appear in the to-do column once a sprint is started. After a developer decides to work on a task, she will pull the card to the in progress column. This would give the entire scrum team a sense of which tasks or features are currently in progress. Once she is done developing the feature, she will need to create a pull request and wait for it to be reviewed by her peers. At this point, the card will be pulled to the code review column. Once reviewed, the ticket will then be moved to the dev QA column, where first-hand testing will be performed by the developer in dev server. Finally, the task is passed over to the QA for final verification. The QA verifies the task or feature based on the defined acceptance criteria and ensures quality by laying down proper test cases and even validating age cases. Only after the QA's approval, the task is moved from the QA column to the UAT. After a ticket reaches here, all stakeholders can test this feature in the UAT environment. Also, after getting the client sign off in the UAT process, the tickets can be moved to done. Now, similar to columns, the issue status in Jira also shows the various stages of a particular issue in a workflow. Every column in the workflow has a status. Usually, the column names and status names are kept the same for ease of use. An issue in actual transitions through various statuses defined in the workflow while you drag and drop the card across various columns. However, in some cases, you may want to add in multiple statuses in a single column. For instance, the done section can be divided in two parts status done and status closed. Let's assume we had a research task in our sprint. The research was completed, however the code was not merged to the master branch because it had dependencies on other items. Should we now mark this as done? Well, definitely the ticket was done indeed, but since it was not merged to the master branch, the task did not make it to our production server at this point in time. In such cases, we could make use of the closed status. This could give our customers a sense of which items did really make it up to the production release and which did not. Let's briefly go over WIP limit or work in progress limit. WIP limit is a lean way of limiting the workflow. It restricts the maximum amount of work items in various stages of the workflow. Well, this allows you to complete single work items faster by helping your team to focus only on current tasks. This is usually practiced on the Kanban process. However, Jira also allows you to add in whip limits in active sprints. This is usually termed as column constraints. You can define both the minimum and maximum count of issues in each column. In our board, the maximum whip limit is set to 2 for in progress. If the number of tasks in in progress is more than that, the column is highlighted in red to show that your team has crossed the whip limit. This really helps in visualizing if the team is over capacity. Alright, uh, let's move on to understanding what is swim lane now. A swim lane is a row on the board that can be used to group issues and helps in task visualization. In general, swim lanes are usually based on stories, epics, or assignees. If it's based on stories, the primary task displayed would be a user story and the subtask would be shown inside the main story task. 
you can transition the subtasks through various stages of the workflow and once all the subtasks have been marked as done, the main story would automatically be marked as done as well. Similarly, for the case of Epic, all of the tasks connected to the Epic would be displayed beneath the main Epic task. In Assigning Swimlane, task view will be separated based on individual assignee. Zira also provides an option to define swim lanes based on custom queries. For instance, you can create a separate section to show just the blocker or critical priority tickets and display the rest of the tickets under everything else section. For example, here's a quick custom query that we have used in our board for our swim lane view. All right, that's all for the Zira workflows. Please don't forget to ask questions or give feedback in the comment section below. See you in the next video.